My name is Pastor Chad Shapiro from Ignite Community Church. I'm so grateful to be one of the church plants that have been birthed out of Saba here. I, uh, coming into church planting was really all new to me. I did not actually even come to faith in Christ until the age of 30. I was more in the business world, running businesses, trying to worry about making money, different things like that, but I always felt that that thing that was missing in my life, and that was, of course, Jesus Christ. And so I'm uh, following his uh, plan of action and plugging into some amazing churches eventually led us to planting a church, but being so new and so uh, not sure about how to do that. I was never part of a church plant before in my walk with uh, with Christ, and, and so it was so inexperienced, and Saba um, has this incredible uh, organization here to be able to help churches that have been around for obviously decades and then brand new church plants like myself and so to be able to come in and, and have some financial support to have guidance of other ministers and pastors and and uh, churches that have been uh, being able to serve this community for for decades uh, and and even some of that are a lot newer but just the whole collaboration an association to be able to come alongside and help somebody like us at Ignite Community Church has been an incredible blessing and I'm excited for things to come in the future. I think one of the keys to connect or reasons why to connect is because many of us um, are off on our own. We're a little bit siloed as leaders and we're kind of worried about doing our own little building, our own little church. And I'm sure it's a trick of the enemy to get us to divide and conquer amongst each other, to get us to be so worried about our little church that we don't worry about the, the bigger church, the being able to come together and unite. And there's so many resources and, and information and knowledge and experience that we can learn from one another. And so as being part of Saba is, is critical to every single one of us because we get to gather together, uh, whether it be the ministers meetings, the executive board meetings, different programs they have. There's so many different things that we can be able to learn from uh, one another to gather with people that are like-minded to be able to uh, help one another. And as we all encourage and help and guide one another, we're teaching our congregations, you know, that there's so much more um, than them just worried about their own life, but they're supposed to be out there evangelizing and leading as well, just like we are. And they get to see a bigger picture from watching us as the church leaders do that. And so I encourage you to be part of the association, gather together, be, you know, build on relationships. So if we only show up once in a while and we bop in and bop out, then it's more of a, you know, there's not any depth to it. There's no, there's no uh, intimacy in terms of relationship. And so to get to know one another, uh, make it a priority is what we've done and uh, show up often as much as you can, participate as much as you can in Saba, and you'll see that those relationships and that growth will start to lead to more trust, more bonds, and greater fruit in whatever you're trying to do. Saba has helped so much in my life personally, being a new church planner and in our church's life consequently because I needed a lot of help and I think a lot of us do. There's so many things uh, that we can learn. And so financially at the beginning as a church planner, oh my gosh, critical. And then just all of the different things you would learn from every single day from some of the Saba leaders that are here that work full time, but also all of the other partner churches being able to continue to guide and have whether it's financial meetings or uh, media training and production or just church planning guide about outreach or different things like that or missions or all of these things that we could do better. And so where are we gonna learn that? We can study it from books and we should. We should go to school and be able to learn and take classes. But to be part of an association has been critical. And I would imagine, again, I'm looking at it from our perspective of being a newer church plan in the first couple of years here, but I, I would hope that 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road, there's still so much for us to learn. How do we do uh, in that season of ministry better uh, than we might just stumbling around all by ourselves? And that's what Saba and the group can work with together. So to be a part of that, what we do is 
And we don't want to just take, we want to be able to give back as well. And so we all work together. The same Holy Spirit that's in somebody that's in their 70s or 80s, that's been in ministry for decades, the same Holy Spirit's within me or somebody that's maybe even much younger than me in their 20s. So we should all be able to come together and not just try to figure out you know, what we can grab at and get out of it, but what we can give back because that experience. Let's say somebody that's in their 70s or 80s are trying to figure out how to outreach to younger generations. They're trying to figure out how, you know, with times changing. Well, guess what? Why wouldn't we then, you know, be so excited about building relationships with somebody in their 20s or 30s and discipling them and coming alongside them and, and working with them to figure out how to grow and honor God you know, in this day and age for them. And then if somebody's younger, then there's so much to learn. We don't need to have an ego and just run around making our own, you know, like we know everything. There is so much to learn for somebody who's inexperienced from ministries that have been around for decades or, you know, or, or even less, you know, but just steps ahead. There's so much to learn from them. So put our egos aside, come in, but do it through giving. All of us have something to receive, but we also all have something to give, whether it's financial resources to the association to help support the mission here in San Antonio, whether it's our time, uh, you know, with, you know, being able to volunteer and, and build the bonds that come through actually spending good, solid time with one another, um, whether it be different experiences and strengths that you've gained, I've gained, from our past careers that we might have that we could bring to the table. There's so much, you know, you, you and I know, there's so much that we could do to be able to give back that could help other people. And then imagine at the end of the day, when we go to heaven, I don't think God's gonna say, you know, how many did you just do all by yourself? You know, I think it's gonna be high-fiving one another saying, you know, look what you did in your ministry. I, you know, I was able to be a part of your life in this and that, and we're just gonna be up there cheering one another on, um, you know, regardless of the name of the church, regardless of the area where the church is in the city, uh, or even the state, or even the world, to be able to help one another, to be able to, help people get into the kingdom and to be able to help them while they're here on earth. In five years from now, I can just only imagine, I'm watching this leadership every single day of Saba just take it to higher levels and higher levels and higher levels. Um, I was not here in the past, too new as a church planner to even know, but I can tell that a lot of uh, ministries in general are going through transitions in this new day and age that we're in uh, of society where maybe some would say a post-Christian um, society that we're in and Saba is at the cutting edge of fighting forward in that not hanging back on the way things were done you know 10 20 30 years ago um, just you know uh, being settling for that but in fact realizing that that was great people did some amazing things within saba back then in our history and we should be proud of it but what are we going to do now you know as a you know, we've heard you know, for a time such as this what are we going to do in this day and age and this leadership group of Saba is fighting forward in missions, fighting forward in church planting and growth, fighting forward in unity, gathering the, the churches together. Not so much even big group meetings of 40, 50, 60 pastors, which sometimes you can get lost in that and you just kind of show up and grab a bite to eat and listen to a speaker and then go home. But smaller groups where there's authentic relationships of very different people that are sitting down at the same table, fellowshipping with one another, getting to know each other better, trusting one another, and out of that unity, out of that love, out of that, that trust, then we can do even greater things uh, with the gifts that God has given us. So I, I, I look forward to uh, and see in the future incredible things for Saba, being able to, the best years really ahead of us, to go sky high in terms of reaching out to the city. And really, if you think about it, if we become unified, if we start to love one another, the best would be in front of us, not behind us. And that's what's so exciting about being part of Saba. We are Saba. Do you see us now? <laughs>